we're looking at the temptation of Jesus, and we've covered just Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. The Holy Spirit specifically led Jesus into the wilderness by himself, specifically to be tempted by the devil. And we could add in parenthesis, in order to be tested by God, to be proven sinless, to be qualified, to be the one who would die for our sins. Sinners can't die for the sins of sinners. Sinners have to die for their own sins. Jesus had to be sinless if he was gonna be our savior. So this is part of our redemption right here. And uh, we go then into uh, the details of, of the time of temptation. It really didn't happen, apparently, till after over a month of Jesus fasting. In verse number two, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Uh, I have never fasted for 40 days myself. Um, I, fasted for as long as maybe seven days. But those who have fasted for long periods of time like this uh, will tell you that your body uh, consumes uh, all the fat that it has you know, on it. And then when it runs out of fat, then it begins, it enters into the, uh, literally a starvation mode, feeding on itself, feeding on those organs and so forth, which are of least importance and working its way down. And then, you know, you eventually die. You can go for a long, long time without food. You can't go for more than three or four days without water, but food, it is amazing how the body preserves itself. And folks who have fasted for a long time say, well, you know that you've entered the starvation mode when all of a sudden you get that intense hunger. Now people say, well, I fasted two days and I got intense hunger. No, no, you didn't. You never hit the starvation mode at two days or three days or four days. You might've been hungry, but it wasn't starvation. It was just psychological on your stomach shrinking and growling and so on and so forth. This is an intense hunger. But I want you to see that when the devil came, it was when Jesus was very, very vulnerable. He's entering into a starvation mode here now. You know, not just a little bit of hunger. This is that intense, craving that comes upon a person who, whose body is beginning to feed upon essential muscle and, and organs and so forth. And so in verse number three, and the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. So there's a couple of levels of temptation here, and I'm not claiming to understand everything that's going on here. Um, you know, we could break it apart piece by piece. Again, Jesus is facing extreme hunger. It seems as if the tempter, Satan, has picked up on that. And he's saying to him, go ahead and, you know, use your power to make uh, bread for yourself to, to meet your needs. I mean, who's going to find fault with that? As, you know, guy's starving. He has the power to make bread. Go ahead, just use your power and, and, and turn stones into bread. Now, I don't know if Satan was doubting that Jesus was the Son of God, or you know if uh, he was trying to get Jesus to doubt that he was the Son of God. That, I, I've thought about that for many times for a long time, and it, Scripture doesn't say, you know, so we really don't know. Uh, I can't believe that the devil um, didn't have some insight that Jesus was a unique person of history and that he was the Son of God. And, and if, if the devil was questioning it, I mean, why does Jesus have to prove anything to, to the devil? I mean, uh, not that maybe he didn't, but I, I, if he did, I don't understand that. And so I guess I lean towards the viewpoint that Satan was trying to make Jesus doubt that he was the Son of God. Um, you know, to try to stop him in his ministry. I do know this, that Satan is the big time liar. He is the father of lies. And I know that uh, he at times tries to discourage us uh, regarding what God has said about us. You, you recall that just 40 days prior to this, you know, uh, God's voice had spoken from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus heard that. But now in a, a, a moment of, of extreme vulnerability and, and weakness and hunger and so forth, I'm just wondering if he was having any uh, second guesses about that. Or maybe Satan's trying to fill his mind with doubts as to what God has said about him. Again, I, I'm not claiming I'm certain of the answer. I do know this. Satan will try to talk you out of what God has said about you. You know, because uh, those of us who are in Christ, we are sons of God through faith in Christ. 
we're told in Galatians. And we are uh, more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And nothing is impossible to him who believes. Well, these are all very positive statements that we find in the word of God that are true, right? They're as true as the word of God is true. Has Satan ever tried to talk you out of what God has said about you? Well, if he has, and I suspect he probably has, just like he has me, we need to remind ourselves of who we are in Christ and what God has said about us and say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And all these other good things that the Lord has declared about those who have believed in Jesus. I do possess eternal life. The Holy Spirit does live inside me. Now, back to this specific temptation. Um, there, there's questions I have. Um, I know that Jesus was and is and always has been the Son of God. I, I do have a question, however, and, and this might open up uh, a whole other discussion that we'll have to push to a later point in time as we work our way through the, through the four Gospels. But uh, Jesus did, Scripture say, says, empty himself when he became a man. Obviously, when Jesus became a man, he was no longer omnipresent. Correct? I mean, he was no longer all over the place, having his presence everywhere. He was limited to being in one place at one time. And so he wasn't omnipresent. He also, apparently from a number of scriptures that we, we, we will study, he, he wasn't omniscient, that is all-knowing. Yes, at times he did have supernatural knowledge, but it, the, the, these were things that we would call gifts of the Holy Spirit that operate as the Spirit wills. Jesus asked questions, apparently, you know, wanting answers. And um, he, he, he wasn't all-powerful either. He, the Bible says he, in his hometown he could do no mighty work there, except he healed a few sick people and so forth. So a lot of things going on here that, uh, you know, raise a lot of questions and, and, and are worthy of further discussion, okay? And so we will discuss these further, all right? I love studying the Word with you. Let's see you next time. Mm -hmm.